Okay, so this is my Pi 400, and uh, as you'll probably know, the Pi 400 is passively cooled. So it's got a big sheet of aluminium just underneath the keyboard, and that keeps it cool. And it actually does a really good job. I found that passively, it was better than my Pi 4 with a ice tower cooler, but without the fan switched on. Uh, so in passive mode, this was cooler because it's got a slightly different processor and that really large heat sink seems to work really well. But I thought maybe we can get a few degrees cooler by active cooling. Uh, and I was going to make something out of polymorph, but in the end I decided just to try it out with a bit of cardboard. So, and I know this isn't great, but uh, if you look at the bottom here, uh, so I've got sellotape all around here, so no air is going this way. On the bottom of here, there is uh, some little vents to allow some air to flow. And uh, I don't know which direction is best for it to flow, and I'm gonna find that out when I plug the fan in. But uh, you can see on the side here, I've tried to channel it down. So this has got an angle here, and there's a little tiny bit, a little tiny gap that's down this side. So this is all sealed here with sellotape. Uh, so the air is gonna go into it in there. So I figured I'd try it, first of all, pushing air in. So I can pop that in. I could put a bit of sellotape around the edges to, to, to make a slightly better seal. Uh, and I'm plugging this in with GPIO pins and it's going in the second and third pin on, uh, on this side. So let's plug that in. So I'm plugged in and I'm also gonna put some sellotape on each corner because I find that some of the air escapes through that corner. Now I think that's why I'm better off to have it uh, going away from it rather than towards it, but we'll give it a try. Okay, so not perfect, but we'll give it a try. Okay, so you can see the nice neon lights, uh, although the chocolate block tends to look pretty bad, and also the, uh, the tape on the, on the pins isn't very good either, but let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so I've started up Handbrake and I'm just gonna convert a file. Uh, so if I'm gonna do open source, uh, I'm on the desktop already, GoPro Hero 7 and open. And uh, let's go for general and I'm gonna go for 720.30, 720.30 fast. So let's convert that and see if that starts uh, to heat it up. So it's on 31 at the moment. Oh, straight up to 35, look. That was interesting to see. 39, 40, 41. <laughs> oh dear, 43. That's climbing fast, isn't it? 44, 45. If I hover over this, it'll probably tell me the clock speed. Yeah, 2,200. It's 2147 it's set to. Uh, yeah, 46. 47, 49, still going up. How long does this take? So ETA, one minute and 40 minutes. Okay, well, we should get a good good guide as to how well that does that. 51, still at 52 degrees with 25 seconds left. That seems all right. But I can obviously do this test as well uh, without any of my extra, extra cooling and see if it makes a difference because it, be, it could be making it worse because I could be blocking, I could be forcing air in but the air hasn't got anywhere to go. 54 degrees, 54 again, 49. So it won't, it won't be throttling itself. Okay, so it's finished now, and you can see the temperature is dropping back down again. Uh, so I thought I'd also play a bit of YouTube video uh, just as a, a bit of a test as well. And let's play a minute of this video at 1080. It's already at 1080. So it's climbing up a little bit, but it's not climbing up anything like as much as it was when it was doing the video. Okay, so that's a minute and it's gone up to 43 degrees. So let's stop that there. And what I'm gonna do is turn the fan around, but I'm gonna stop everything running at the moment to let it cool down a bit. Actually, I'm gonna switch it off. Okay, so let's take the fan out, spin it around and pop it back in again. So now it's an exhaust fan rather than pushing the air in. And I probably don't need to put any sellotape on this. It's just, it's fine as it is because it's only expelling air. So I think that'll be all right. Interestingly, uh, there did seem to be air coming out of the GPIO pins. Uh, it, it seemed to be a little bit of airflow, but not very much. Okay, so 32 degrees before we start. So let's click on handbrake. So video 
and handbrake. You see it already starts to ramp up. Uh, open source, GoPro Hero and open. And I changed it to general and 72030. Okay, so let's hit start, see what happens. See if it ramps up as quick. Check the clock speed, yeah, so already 44 left. 2200, yeah, 47, 48. So I'll show on the left hand side of the screen pushing the air in and I'll show on the right hand side of the screen pulling the air out and see which one comes out the best. It's 54 degrees, 52 degrees. Fifty four again. And just to check it it doesn't throttle as as low as this. There you go, so it's running at full speed. 55. The most interesting will be when I'm doing it without all the cardboard and the fan and everything like that and see if it does make any difference at all. So 56 degrees now. There you go. So that's finished. It drops straight down, look. 50, 45, because the clock speed drops down, obviously. Uh, so let's open up Chromium. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to be getting any higher, does it? Or oh, 43, just as I say that. Back down to 42, back down to 40. Uh, and if we look at the clock speed, you'll see that it's still running full. I think with Chromium, it does just keep running full. It doesn't, it doesn't toggle back or anything. If you come out of Chromium and start using ordinary apps uh, or games or programs, a lot of things do toggle back down if it doesn't feel it needs the extra power. 58, 59, so that's a minute on that test. Okay, so now I can unplug this. Uh, I can take this fan out because it was only just resting in there uh, before. And all of this should come off pretty easily because it's all just sellotape. So it's probably easy to start off on one end. So just to show you what it was, it was literally just this. <laughs> so, I kind of funneled it down through here and you can see I'd, I'd put this against and everything was sealed against the pie as well as you can with sellotape and cardboard. Um, but the vents it was using uh, were these vents. So it was either pushing air in this way uh, and I felt that it was coming out the GPIO pins. I could have been wrong. It's hard, it's hard to tell when, it, when it's um, not a great deal of airflow. Uh, but the other way was extracting it out through. So let's see what it's like in passive mode. Okay, so here's all three running at the same time. Uh, so on the left hand side, we've got intake, we've got passive in the middle, and we've got exhaust on the right. So overall in this video conversion test, the intake is definitely lower than the other two. And uh, at some times it's about four degrees lower. Uh, sometimes as you can see there, it was only one degree lower, but flicking through it, I found that more often than not, it was three or four degrees lower than the passive and the exhaust. The exhaust is actually hardly any different to the passive. And I think really it's because I was only using a very small fan and uh, it's, it's not really going to suck anything out of that tiny little gap there. Whereas the intake is forcing air through uh, and it's got nowhere else to go. And uh, when you look at the pie and think about the direction that it's traveled, so it's gone in and uh, it goes past the CPU and then goes out through the GPIO pins. I suppose that does make sense that that would be making a difference. So a bit like the official Raspberry Pi fan, uh, which is directing it through and it's not using any extra holes or anything like that, uh, it does seem to make a difference. So I think if you had a more powerful fan and also you had a system where it was much better sealed on the bottom of the Pi, I actually think it would be worth doing and uh, you would be able to get maybe 10 degrees cooler on the Pi 400 and maybe overclock it higher than before. Um, but uh, I'm going to play around with overclocking on the Pi 400 anyway. But I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.